Hi there, thanks for joining today. We're going to do a short video to show you how to create payment runs in SAP by design. Let's jump right in. So today we're going to look at a number of areas. Uh, we're going to primarily spend our time in the financial section. We're going to be looking in the payables work center where we're going to create a payment run. And we'll also have a look inside payment manager, payment management to see our outputted payments. So let's start with the basics of the payment run. So inside the payables work center, you'll see a periodic task here called payment runs. If you launch this, it's going to take you into a queue. The default list here is all of your active payment runs. Um, what I often see clients do is every single time they create a check run, um, they will just add a new uh, job here or a new payment run in the system. Uh, you can do that, but you really don't have to. Um, so in fact, it probably makes more sense if really you just keep the active payment runs active. And I'll show you what, what I mean by that. So I'm going to just take all of these sort of historical testing garbage runs, and I'm just going to set them to obsolete. And it looks like one of them is currently running. So that one is not going to deactivate for us. So we'll take all the rest of them. And so you could do something like this, essentially just have a single payment run called weekly payment run with your parameters in it. And you can see our parameters are our company. We're looking at all suppliers, all currencies, and we're not specifying any dates. So the system is really going to look at anything that is due right now. So if you do want to create a new job, that's very simple. You can go to new payment run and you can fill out those exact same parameters yourself, however you need them. In this case, I am just going to work off the one that's already created in the system. So I'm just going to hit the schedule. And then the beauty of the payment run is you could just set this up to run, let's say, once a week, which is a very common uh, payment run cycle. So you could specify, you know, daily, which day of the week you want this job to run. We're going to do ours on demand. So we're just going to say start immediately. Now, if we refresh our screen here, what is going to happen is we're going to get our job appearing on the bottom of the screen. So you can see this job um, from a couple of days ago was sitting, uh, sitting here. And the next one, we're just waiting for it to come up. So we're just going to give that a moment. So now we can see that our job that we've just run today is finished. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go in and look at the payment proposals. So I set up a scenario here where I have a couple of payments where I've got issues inside the invoice of the supplier to help you understand how to solve some of those problems. So one of the things that you may see is you may see items here that say postponed. It is possible that things say postponed because you don't have um, perhaps sufficient overdraft limits set on your bank account setup. So that's probably the first thing I would check. Uh, if I don't really care about managing overdraft in the system, I can just go to actions and reset the postpone and I want to force it into preparation. So those ones have been resolved. Now we can see that we have another situation here. So this particular supplier, let's go in and have a look at this payment proposal. So if we go in here and we choose our payment ID. So one thing I notice is there is um, no payment method. So I'm going to try to reset the, the postponement and now I'm getting an error message. So it's telling me that there's missing data on the supplier. I'm going to show you that's a very common issue that you can run into. So the supplier was set up incorrectly. We're going to go into the financial data tab of the supplier. And we're paying out of company 1000 Almica. And you can see that there's been no payment method set up. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a payment method. And you could set up multiple payment methods. It's going to work its way from top to bottom, order of priority. So we're going to save and close that. And then let's try resetting the postponement on that. So you can see that immediately solved the problem. It's moved to a status of in preparation. 
And then our last issue is we have this supplier here, which it looks like the system has not been able to determine which bank account in the system. So we're just going to click on edit proposal there. And we can manually assign what bank account we're going to be paying this expense report out of. Now, all of these items are in preparation. So before we actually do the final step to execute this payment run, I want to just point out a couple things. So you may also have a situation where there was something you were expecting to show up on your payment run hasn't appeared. Uh, let me show you a quick way to sort of solve that because I did set up a payable that's actually not due until a few days from now. So along with this, what I'm going to do is cancel this payment run because that's something you may need to know how to do. So we're going to highlight all of these rows and I'm just going to say void the proposal. So once we do that, it takes us back to our main screen, and this payment run is still sitting here with the status of, of finished, but there really isn't any payment runs inside it. If we go back into the payment proposal, you can see everything has been removed. Now that particular payable I was talking about, we're going to pop up here into the supplier invoicing. We're just going to go look at invoices. I set this up a little earlier. So I have a posted invoice for Donovan Marketing. And that particular invoice, I have it due on April 1st. And because today is March 25th, the system is not selecting that. So if we go back to our payment proposals, so once again into payables, payment runs, instead of building a payment run off this weekly one, this time we are going to create a new payment run. And we're going to call this maybe select feature payments or select feature invoices might be more appropriate. It's going to still post it on today's date. If you don't fill that out, I'm going to leave everything else. But the one thing I'm going to put in here is a next payment run date. So what that date helps me do is it says to the system, if I'm not going to do a payment run until this far into the future, then I need to consider any invoices that are coming up due in that time frame as well in order for them to be paid on time. So in this case, let's just go, let's say the 15th of April. So we're well into the future. System is knowing that unless it pays anything due up until that date, there's going to be overdue items. Now there is also another hidden setting in the system that helps you manage cash flow, which builds intolerance days. We're not going to go into that today, but that's another system setting that can sort of add or subtract days to your payment run. So we're going to make this payment run active. And we're going to schedule it and we're going to say start immediately. And then we're going to close the screen. Then we're going to refresh here and you're going to see that now we have this sort of one off payment run. And the reason I didn't resubmit this previous one is because you can see that one does not have a next payment run date. If you want your run to be set up automatically to let's say happen each each week through automation, then you can't use this feature to do the next payment run date because that date will be set every single time you do the run. So that's why there, if you are going to use this feature, then you're going to have to do a one-off payment run each time. So we're just going to give this a moment. Okay, you can see that based on this select feature invoice run we created, this is now finished. Once again, let's go in and have a look at our proposals. And you can see that we have these items uh, because we had voided that previous proposal, those same sort of situations we had before still exist. So I can go in and if I like, I can make those reset. I won't bother fixing this expense report one. We'll just leave it off this run. And you can see that now this Donovan marketing is available to you. Um, I'll also just point out that um, if you do want to take something off the payment run, simply a matter of highlighting the row and choosing to void that proposal. So we, for example, could take Monroe's uniforms off this payment run. And then once you've got it to the final sort of stage and you want to um, submit it or execute this proposal, at this point, before we do that step, one thing I'd like to point out to you, if you go into the payment management, I mentioned this earlier, we're going to look at the payment monitor. The payment monitor is where all of your pending and executed payments will sit. So 
even though we haven't done the final execution, the system has already gone in and it's sort of reserved the dollars and the documents and the types of payment methods it's going to use for those items in the current payment run. So there's nothing we can do in this screen. This is really just, if someone's monitoring this, they can see that there's a payment run in process. It has to happen inside this payment proposal, but I wanted to bring that to your attention. So pay attention to the fact that this says in preparation. And then we will take these final, uh, and all I did is hold down the shift key to select all the items that I want to do a payment for. And I'm gonna choose execute proposal. And at this point, uh, potentially uh, multiple things could happen or different things could happen depending on the way your system's configured. So if you have an approval process, uh, this may say uh, in approval, meaning that it's now been routed to somebody in the finance department to approve this check run, perhaps from a cash flow perspective. And then they would have another opportunity to also remove payments from the payment run. However, we don't have a payment proposal in this case, so we can see that these ones are closed. So really we are done with this payment proposal. And if you are the same person who's actually responsible for printing the checks, then once again, go into payment manager, go to payment monitor. Um, and then you have all of these items. If we hit refresh now, they say ready for transfer. So these ones can now have uh, checks created or perhaps they'll be grouped together in an EFT file. I won't cover that in this video, how you actually print checks or create files or do wire payments um, may depend on your system configuration. So that was just a quick overview of how the payables payment run engine works. Hope that that was helpful for you.